We're here today on Nebraska's Lake McConaughey. Rumor has it this is where lead core trolling for walleyes originated. One thing I do know is that trolling spinner baits for walleyes did originate here. The local guys figured out something special, trolling spinner baits in the trees. I'm here with Ben Garver. We're going to spend some time on the big lake of Nebraska, bouncing spinner baits into treetops to see if we can catch some of those big McConaughey walleyes. So come and join us. I think we're going to have some fun on your next bite. Bass baits and walleyes may seem like oil and water. I was on at 225 on that one. I was really pounding hard at like 235, so I just brought it up a little bit. But when it comes to using structure to elicit a reactionary bite. Well, maybe tickling the tops of them trees a little more than burying them in is. It's hard to tell. I think sometimes these fish reaction strike so much, you know, they just see that thing bouncing around in those branches. Nothing is being lost in the translation here on the huge reservoir of Lake McConaughey on the western plains of Nebraska. Multi-tournament walleye circuit professional angler Ben Garver has been fishing Nebraska waters all his life. But Lake McConaughey is special in that it is not only alluded to be the birthplace of lead core line fishing. We got one here. Oh yeah. Yeah, this thing was hanging up, turned around, and it was on, it was hanging on, not hanging out. <laughs> but most certainly the origin of bouncing spinner baits off submerged trees in pursuit of huge walleyes. I got this rod cleared and I got a waypoint on it, so. All right, good. I just switched this one to a white one. Went to all white. Yeah. Last one was on a chartreuse and white. Right. I didn't switch it by choice. A tree decided he wanted to eat the other one that was on there. Yeah, welcome to Lake McConaughey. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, we got yeah, him. He, did he get in the other line? He oh, is in the oh, other yeah, line, yeah. I tell you, he came up at first and took a little dive there. I thought maybe he'd pop off, but. Hooked really good. Yeah. When you're looking to troll spinner baits in the trees, obviously you've got to find the trees. Flooded timber is the key. It's not like typical walleye structure. You're really not caring about whether it's on a flat area or a drop off area because the trees themselves are your structure. Sometimes they'll be on top of the trees, right on the treetops. Sometimes the walleyes will be in the branches. Sometimes they'll be down by the bases. But what we do is we troll the spinner baits right into the trees. When they're coming along, they hit those tree branches as they bounce off, they're going through. Those fish see that and they think something's wrong with that bait. So a lot of times they'll just come up and grab it. And there are a lot of big fish that live there. So remember, the trees are the key to the spinner bait pattern. When I uh, get this in, I'll get a waypoint on oh, it. Oh, this right is away a good too. one. That feels good. All right. Oh, there he just got a little heavier, he felt like. We're at 100 foot. Okay. Boy, I sure hope this is one of them big ones, Gary. It's hard to tell when you got a, got a little you bit of line out like that. Lead core and stuff. You tell them normally when you get close to the boat. Yeah, here he's. When they decide to get mean. He's gaining weight as we speak. Yeah. It's got to be a good one. He just took a little line on me. I did loosen drag a little bit since we're in the clear of the trees. But. Oh yeah, he's a decent fish. Oh, oh, and the oh. spinner bait's off yeah. in the net. Look at that. Wow. Oh. Look at this fish. He's shorter but fatter. Look at him. What a little football. Oh, he's been Look eating at good. That fish. He's been eating real good. He's just enormous. <laughs> Holy man, look at the gut on that thing. Oh, what a football. <laughs> what a football. <laughs> oh. I'll tell you what, that looks like a teenager that's been sitting on the at the table eating lots of cheeseburgers. <laughs> hey, that's how we grow our huskers around here. <laughs> When 
we're trolling spinner baits in the trees, I watch my electronics almost nonstop. I got a couple screenshots here on the Lawrence unit where I can show you some prime examples of, of the perfect trees we're looking for for spinner baits. In this first example, we got some trees that you can see on the down scan. You can also see them in your traditional 2D sonar as well. You can pick out the fish on the traditional sonar and as well as looking at the down scan, you can see some of them fish in there. There's also a ball of bait fish in there as well. Really nice thing to have when you're looking for perfect trees. In this second shot, the down scan again shows some perfect trees. We got some really nice fish marks that show up in that down scan and you can see them in in the traditional sonar as well. There's also some bait fish in there. It's exactly what I'm looking for when I'm trolling spinner baits in the trees. The next bite is brought to you by Mercury, number one on the water. Amsoil, performance for serious adventure. Tracker boats, fish the finest. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Berkeley, catch more fish. And Motor Guide, trolling motors engineered for anglers. Closed captioning for the next bite is provided by PowerPole, the ultimate in shallow water anchors. Pretty little things these bass spinner baits, aren't they? All kidding aside, these are great walleye spinner baits too. This is called a hack attack. The lightest ones that we use are three quarters of an ounce. It has a nice willow leaf and also a small Colorado. And for some reason, this spinner bait from body of water to body of water uh, has been great for catching walleyes. The other one is called a bottom dweller. This bottom dweller is normally a little bit heavier. This is a one ounce, and, and we've been using the three quarter to one ounce spinner baits for this show. It's got a double set of willow blades. The key is that they're heavy. You couple that with lead core, and you can get down to those 20 and 30 and 40 foot depths that you need to get to reach the treetops. So remember, if you want to use pretty bass baits, use these for walleyes. They'll catch them pretty good. Fish, that's a fish, that's a big one. I'm gonna actually slow this down. We still got the trees? Yeah, there's a few trees there yet, so. I feel like he's up. Yeah. 200 foot. Woo! I'm gonna start clearing this because he's starting to come across. Still clear on the trees, Gary? I wouldn't let him go down real far. 110 feet. <laughs> you know, he looked pretty wide to me. He might yeah. be one of those big old wipers, huh? What? Yeah, what is it? Usually the wipers will run a little more on you and stay down, but trees are thinning up a little, but I'm not going to let them down. Well, he's going over that other one now. Let me see. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Are you going to be under it? I think so. I'm going to go like this. And just take the chance that he went under it or we went over it, which I think he did. All right. Yep. Oh, he's a big, big wiper. wiper. Look at that. That's oh, tuna. Awesome. Oh, we call them tuna out here. <laughs> Look at that thing. Oh, man. What a tuna. That thing is awesome. <laughs> oh, they're such brutes, Gary. Oh. Oh, wait till you lift that thing. Look at this They're guy. so heavy and strong. You know, the first time I saw him when he was up towards the surface, I thought, man, he's awful wide. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what an incredible fish. Here, see if you can pop him on. Absolutely eating machines. <sighs> Oh, there you are. It's been a long time since I caught a wiper. That I thing's, didn't catch him, you did. But <laughs> that thing's got to be pushing 10 pounds or better. It's, it's, it's solid fish. Yeah. So thick. <laughs> They're a cross between a striper and a white bass. Yes. And they are pound for pound absolute brutes. Oh, this a, is a nice one. There's a lot of guys in this uh, that fish this lake that love to catch those things. They're oh. absolutely incredible fish. Yeah, I can see why. You know, you don't know what you're going to get when you're pulling these spinnerbaits. Nope. It a little might bit be anything. a huge northern. It might be a giant walleye. It could be a, a wiper like this. Maybe even a catfish. <laughs> Maybe a big catfish. <laughs> so uh, we're going to get this guy back in. But Sounds good. Look That's at awesome. The size of him. Oh, they're fun. They're <laughs> the next fun. bite, baby. <laughs> Real fishing information from real fishing experts presented by Amsoil. 
One of the techniques that I really love to utilize for walleyes is the use of plastics. Pitching different types of plastics, you know, casting different shapes of plastics. And one thing that Berkeley has done is came up with a new lineup of plastics this year. It's called the Pro Series. Now I'm a very big, firm believer in plastics. I've had a lot of success in the last few years in the tournament fishing and even won a championship last year utilizing Power Bay plastics. And one of the new shapes is this new Pro Shad. You know, it looks like a shad, you know, it looks like a minnow, but that one thing that really gets me going is this new tail. The segmented tail has very lifelike action, just like a bait fish would swimming through the water. But one thing to keep in mind that this is just not your ordinary plastic. This is power bait, which is a scent impregnated plastic. So when fish bite, they hold on a lot longer because they taste something. A couple different ways that I like to use this plastic is the first, a straight retrieve. I'll cast this bait out there, you know, just swim it with a nice slow and steady retrieve. You don't need to always imply a lot of action to this bait because it always looks, already looks so natural. So I just simply work it through the water a lot of times halfway through my retrieve, I'll let that bait sink to the bottom, reassure that I'm you know, in that strike zone, very key when you're working brake lines and weed edges. You know, that tail just kicking back and forth, you know, so natural there's almost nothing else you need to do to this bait. So the next way I like to work this bait is a little bit more erratic. This is when I like to use it when the water temperature is a little bit warmer, the fish are a little bit more aggressive. I'll simply cast this bait out, watch my line as it settles to the bottom, and I'll just simply hop it up a foot, a foot and a half, let it return to the bottom and do it again. That bait's falling to the bottom, I snap it up real fast, that paddle tail action creates a lot of vibration as it darts up, but it actually swims its way back down to the bottom, you know, just like a dying bait fish would. This is a lot of time when you're gonna get your strikes is when that bait is returning to the bottom. So this is one of the four new Pro Series line of baits. This is the Pro Shad. It flat out catches fish. What, what? This is a good oh. fish. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That's a good one. Look at that thing. As often the case, big water can mean big waves. You gotta have your sea legs on. Yeah, it's bouncing around. Although this treetop trolling bite doesn't have much to do in the way of contours. In all of this wind, boat control is still a huge consideration for keeping things both fun and safe. When I'm trolling spinner baits, I need to really count on my boat control to keep me out of trouble. And to do that, I like to set the speed on the kicker motor. And for steering, I use the motor guide trolling motor and the key fob. I can put the heading lock on and I can count on this trolling motor pulling me straight ahead if the wind's gonna blow me. If I need to jump up and grab a rod because it's snagged up, I need to grab a rod to fight a fish, I can count on the boat going straight. A lot of things get hectic when you're, when you're spinnerbait fishing and you need to count on that trolling motor to keep you out of trouble. This might be a fish, Ben. Is it a fish? Oh yeah, it's definitely a fish. Oh, I'll get the net. Yeah, it's gotta be a walleye. Oh yeah. Oh, got him, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. He came off right away, yeah, too. he's off. I looked away for a second, and it came back and it was kind of hanging there, and I was like, what is going on? And I reeled it for like 20 feet, and no movement at all, all of a sudden, yeah, then you could tell it was. It's like, not really real weird. aggressive. This one wasn't, he, he didn't was bite easy, like, yeah. He didn't bite like a typical uh, spinnerbait fish, you know? He just, I didn't see him hit it initially. He was more like a crankbait fish. He was just, all of a sudden, he was there. He's a healthy little guy. Yeah, he's a fat little bugger. When you're fishing the trees, you've got to have the right equipment. This isn't like normal trolling. It's a whole different ball game. You've got to have really stout equipment. I like to use the 10 foot walleye angle or rods. The reason for that is they've got a really stiff backbone for hauling those bigger fish right up out of the trees. But yet this tip is quite soft and it needs to be for fighting those fish when they make those runs. Coupled with a nice line counter reel, I have 18 pound test lead core and a 15 pound uh, fluorocarbon leader. It's probably, I don't know, 12 to 18 feet long. That'll give you the muscle to get these fish. Now when you get a bite and you grab this rod out of the rod holder, the first thing you do is reel down on that fish and pull it hard up out of the trees. And then the second thing I do is look back at the graph or ask my partner, are we out of the trees? How high are they? I want to know how much tension and how much type of pressure I've got to put on this fish before I can fight it normal. Because a big northern or a big walleye or a big wiper, they're going to get you down into those branches and you're going to lose them. So like I said, this isn't normal trolling. This is hardcore, heavy gear, 
fight the fish hand-to-hand -hand combat. Most time the fish are so big, the heavy gear you don't notice it. You don't think you have heavy enough stuff to get them in. The next bite is brought to you by Mercury, number one on the water. Amsoil, performance for serious adventure. Tracker boats, fish the finest. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Berkeley, catch more fish. Mustad, stay sharper, longer. Lowrance, fine, navigate, dominate. Motor Guide Trolling Motors, engineered for anglers. Strike King, legacy of domination for 50 years. And Power Pole, swift, silent, secure. Topics, leading information and tackle and techniques to make you a better angler. Presented by Mercury. You know, a few years ago we did a video when Mercury came out with a new little prop called the Spitfire. And back then it was built basically for smaller boats. We tested it on a 16 foot boat. And what we were looking for is basically when you get load in a boat, how can you make it perform better? And we were really impressed back then. Well just recently, uh, Mercury came out with a new Spitfire prop called the Spitfire X7. And it's basically the same kind of design with the blades and the cupping, but it's built for bigger engines. All the way from a 75 up to a 115 like we've got on this boat. So what I decided to do is quick change out the standard prop that comes with this engine and try out this new Spitfire in a bunch of different situations. So the first thing obviously I wanted to look at is hole shot and what I was really impressed is I actually loaded up a bunch of people in the boat and it still was able to get on plane really really quickly and I think especially even if you wanted to do something like tubing or, or water skiing you could really see a big performance enhancement there. The second thing I wanted to look at was handling so I you know gave it some high speed turns what I'm looking for there is to make sure the prop keeps biting the water and holds onto the water so I can make the turns. Where I also saw a difference was when I was trimming the engine up, a lot of times with the standard props, you're going to find that the motor will blow out. It'll basically spin in the water and not be grabbing the water. With this, I was able to trim up much further, still grab the water, and that leads to that final thing. It gives you more top end speed. So if you're looking to increase the performance of your you know, mid-sized boat, and again, you're running a 75 to a 115, you might look at the Spitfire to give you that acceleration, that handling, and that top end speed that you're looking for. Losing a few spinner baits exploring and trolling the tops of submerged trees is just a fact of fishing. I just lost him. No way. Are you kidding me? However, when it comes to reeling down hard on a big Lake McConaughey walleye. That was tight, almost Al Capone me. Burn your fingerprints right off your thumbs if you're not careful. To pull it up and out of the trees, or even a monster wiper, the last thing you'd want after all your hard work is losing a bait, let alone that big fish you've been searching and battling for to a weak connection in your line. I want to show you a really cool knot for, for lead core trolling. It works for tying your leader to your lead core line. First, you're going to start by removing a section of the lead from the Dacron sheath. I'm going to pull about a good five to six inch section of lead out of there. I remove that. I'm then going to slide my fingers down the Dacron sheath where the lead is still in there. You don't want to run down that line. You don't want to tighten up that, that Dacron sheath where you remove the lead. I'm then going to take my leader line. Today, this happens to be 15 pound fluorocarbon. And I'm going to run that fluorocarbon right down the center of that Dacron where I remove that lead from. You get it started and you're going to slide it all the way in to try to hit the lead that's still left inside the Dacron sheath. So you can get about five or six inches of that in there. Once you get that in there, simply tie an overhand knot. You're going to tighten that knot down back on the Dacron right at the end. Ties a good strong knot. I'll tie a second knot then an inch or two down from the first knot and that should be all you ever need good strong knot. After relentless searching, marking and catching a great mix of walleyes and wipers. Bite! What starts out as the subtlest of bites quickly gives rise to the possibility of being that bite that Gary and Ben have been hoping to be able to get a chance at. Fish? Oh yeah, it's definitely a fish. One of the trophy-sized walleyes that they both know to be lurking amongst the submerged forest deep beneath Lake McConaughey. Okay, I'm at 60. Probably. He does not want to come. Oh, up. I'm liking this. <laughs> oh, that's a nice fish. 
Real nice fish. Mr. Marine, I'm gonna make see his head up. Yeah, all yes. right. Oh, man, look at that fish. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's the, that's the Lake Mac pack attack right there. Oh, oh my goodness, Gary. Wow. Oh, man, look at that. Oh, man. Look at it. He whaled it, too. What a beauty. You got her on the hack attack here, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that bait, I'll tell you what, out of all the spinner baits, that bait is some. Look at this fish, Ben. Man, that thing is awesome. Holy, man. This is what you come to McConaughey for, is a pig like this. Absolutely. And spinner baits, man. <laughs> Absolutely. That's where it's at. You know, we tried to get you all day long, and it's time to, time to let them back. Maybe I'll get her in a tournament next year. This has been an amazing trip. And, and with wind and then so a little bit of rain and clouds and sun and then gets calm and, and it just had a, a great time the whole time bashing spinner baits into trees and then end up with a giant like that. I think that's why I have neck problems is because my whole life I've spent going. <laughs> Once you have both of them in there, that's a great... Oh no! It was a perfect tip! <laughs> <laughs> Who nicked that line? Oh, that was shoot. a great tip! <laughs> Failure! There it is! There it is! <laughs> you know, the first thing that you look for when you're fishing these spinner baits... Uh, I knew that was coming, that's why. The next bite would like to thank Otter Creek Lodge and Nebraska Walleye Guide Ben Garver. For more information on Ben and his guide service, visit www.nebraskawalleyeguide.com.